thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale modeling tips on the planet. This time, we're going to join John Martin at the Mid Michigan Model Makers, care of uh, the studios of Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan. We're here with uh, Ryan Woods from the Mid Michigan Model Makers, and Ryan's going to demonstrate uh, how he. Um, does his super detailing using some very pliable and thin striped tape to provide the kind of detail that you need for some of those special projects. Tell us what you're going to demo. Uh, I am going to demo how to lay stripes. How to lay stripes. How to lay stripes. That's what I was told. So you can turn this into muscle car stuff, lowrider stuff, semi stuff. You can turn this into Mustang stuff. I don't know. Whatever you want. Yeah. 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 So, uh, that's the start of it. This is uh, some finished product here. Uh, you can pretty much pass any of that around. Um, and when you say this is the start of it, you're talking about different kinds of stripes? Um, yeah, that's basically my overall rough outline for a pattern. I was going to try to duplicate these decals, mm -hmm. and I would have to tape off a whole bunch of areas and do fades to change my colors, add different colors. So that's just a rough outline, and I would tape off a whole bunch of different areas and single them out and paint just certain spots at one time. So you're saying these are tape stripes? Yes. Yes, and they all started with that. I see. Now, what is that? Uh, 10, 18, this is 18 millimeter to me a tape. Okay, so it's just your basic masking, modeling masking tape. Yes, sir. I use that for my outlines, mm -hmm. and then I will fill in my gaps with any other cheap tape and try not to layer my paint on too thick. Because your cheaper paints, a lacquer will eat your glue and it'll stick to the paint, so it can cause you problems down the line. Ryan built a custom tool. He widened the receiver on an X-Acto knife and put two blades in side by side to cut his tape. So tell us then, you, you split that tape into what, 1 64th <coughs> wide? Okay, you used... Two um, razor blades. These are not fresh, so the one tip is broken. Uh -huh. It'll work just fine for what I'm doing. And I basically lay the tape on glass and use my straight edge. Okay. Run it right down my straight edge. And you can see there's some missing there. Well, let's I've just take a look at that. Taking them off there. Pretty interesting. Oh my you clamp two blades in your exacto knife. And yes. The separation between the, the the bevel of the blade is is the width of your tape. pinstripe. Yep. Yep. Your masking stripe. Yep. Your, your and stripe. this car here, all of it, even your wider areas, they all started out with a pinstripe yes. tape. And then I fill in my areas. Yes. Because if you try to do this on a con curve, like that, you can't stretch one flat piece of tape. And if you look at this, you'll get the cleanest straight lines, very little bleeding, I, it just, it works. Um, I actually learned this offline from some of the guys out in California, the low riding community, so I don't want to completely take credit for, you know, any of it, it's just. I see these look a lot like the, uh, the stuff that's coming out of Dedicated Magazine. Yeah, I know all them guys. Well, I know of them. Even this, you can see there's a real thin silver base Mm -hmm. here and it's all been taped and um, even here it's just uh, different layers you throw your color down and then throw some tape and peel the tape and more color and it gives you a different like graphic arts on the side yeah, of the van yeah. and that's all done with the spray can too isn't it? Um, this body was painted with spray can the body this was all done with um, nail polish every color on that top was nail polish and this is all rattle can but it's all hand polished this is rattle can as well Okay. And that started out the same process, too. You can see the silver base and the black and the green. We were talking about the green one here? Yep. Uh, so the tape that you have here, all, it's all striped off. Yep. Now, then you begin to apply your paints. Is there any sequence that you follow in order to do that? Well, you got to start with your fades. Like I would try to use um, like a smoke, a Tamiya smoke, which is a clear black. So I would fade in my edges so I get a real dark edge without applying a lot of color mm -hmm. so I can keep my tape lines down and then I'll give it a quick coat of my transparent colors and change colors as I go along just to get, like I say, these style of Loretta graphics. 
So once you do your, your base coats, do you have to mask those off in order to do the other coats? Yeah, you're going to want to cover up everything in sections as you go. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's only 20 minutes of tape work, right? No, I got like, uh, I think I think I got like six hours in just the hood. Because I did it three times. The problem, I let it sit for too long, and now the dust has settled on it, and it will be up against the tape edge, which I know for a fact will not give me a flush, smooth, smooth line like I want. So. Um, Aaron's got a question for you. What's up, buddy? Um, how does that tape stay on without peeling off? Um, like the Tamiya tape is really thin as well. You can almost yep. see through it. You can see the granules in it. It gives it the structure, so it allows you to bend it a lot easier. And you got to take your time, though, with when you really do a sharp bend, because you will get folds, but you can work them out. Yep. It takes... It's just like anything else. It's an art. Yeah. It usually doesn't peel. Well. I haven't really had a lot of success with the frog tape, personally. I've tried it a few different times, and I'm just not very happy with it. I heard you got to, uh, you got to wet the, the edge after you lay it down. Huh? You wet the edge, and it, it seals it down. I don't understand. Wet, wet the water on the edge of it. Afterwards. Wet, and I'm going to paint? Wait, yes. what? Well, you let it dry afterwards. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is how you get it up. So it's like there. floss. Yes, but it's got a sticky side. You could wind that around the color splitters. <laughs> yeah. You, you, can, you can wind that. You can wind that around propeller spinners for the German. Yeah. Spiral. Yep. yep. On this 58 here, there's a lot of junctions that I've cut this tape. And they're not, you know, all the way going over. So you got to be real careful too. And you yep, can. Yep. When you get all done with um, all your laying on, you might as well pass that through. around. Want this little section cut And off. maybe this even pass section. that one around for a little finished yep. idea. This is the first one I ever did, and that would be the most intricate one I'm trying to attempt. Yes. Wow. There's some in between yeah. stuff. So. So were you joined or crossed over? Or you cut that tape. So it wouldn't have yep, two. Yeah, I uh, actually surfaces. ran. I ran one solid piece and then cut Far it up. once. I had it. Um, that will give you an idea of what I was planning to do as well. If you want to pass that around with it, because you'll see the fade work. Oh, David, I'm not the only one. Oh yeah, these children scare me. <laughs> Usually, I got a little clampy thing to hold my bodies. <laughs> Clampy thing, yeah. I, I've heard about that. Put it back up there, I'll hold it for you. His face turned real red doing that. That is sick. Yeah, that is sick, man. You got that just I'm trying to focus. Oh, boy. Mm, let's take a look at that. If he glues his fingers together. And sometimes I will even set this down and I'll go off my last cut and I will eyeball even thinner. Those blades are really dull, so I go over them two or three times just to make sure. I should have switched them out before I left, but I act like I'm busy, I'm just lazy. Oh, we didn't get it all the way. So that's how you do that. <laughs> I have no extra in doing this. I don't know how he does this. I have no extra in doing this. I have no extra in doing this. No. Well, that was Jim, but that's a useful one. Turk canopies? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, not, uh, on aircraft trucks? Try and practice. Just, just something no. you haven't done yet. Stick it down, turn it, stick it down, turn it, stick it down, turn it, stick it down, and turn it, work your way around the curve. I'm only going to do one side of this because I'm um, making sure they match is the hard part. Like yeah, that's, symmetrical, that's, that's you know, from side to side. Yeah, that's the trick. I'm just being honest, and I don't plan on using these, the so I'm not going to invest the time. Not 100% perfect, but that's quick. I mean, I've invested 30 seconds into the start of 
SS stripes. Yeah. So basically, you would have your base coat down and then tape off this outside, paint your stripe, and you would have, you know, your inner line and paint. You got a stripe. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Nothing to it but to do it again and again until you figure out how. Because <laughs> it doesn't happen this over doesn't need a Well, we'd like to thank Ryan for showing us how to do some super detailing with tape stripes. He used a custom-made uh, do-it-yourself tool, uh, but I understand some of these are now available in the aftermarket uh, from places like Micromark. So um, you might want to check one of those out or try to make one for yourself and put it on your bench. Well, there you have it. We hope you've enjoyed these scale modeling tips from Right On Replicas. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or you can find us on Facebook or at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.